from politics to economy to business. Thank you for joining us on the program today. The program is New Sponge coming to you live from Ben Television. My name is Tunde Alabi. Today, this Wednesday, the presidency made an announcement reacting to the different um, anti-corruption issues going on in the country. That's today, this Wednesday on the 19th of April 2017, the presidency issued a statement announcing the suspension of the secretary to the government of the federation, Lawa Babashi, and of course announcing the suspension of the director general of the National Intelligence Agency, Mr. Oke, from their different offices with the intention of carrying out deep investigation into the different allegations against these individuals. You will remember that um, Mr. Babashi was accused of um, spending a huge amount of money on um, the, that involves the presidential initiatives on um, the displaced people, people affected by Boko Haram's insurgency in the north uh, uh, west, northeast Nigeria and the Senate uh, passed a resolution that it should be investigated and suspended but it's taken a long time but today the presidency decided to suspend him and over a couple of few days ago there has been these issues around the uh, EFCC locating money uh, at a house um, a luxury tower on Osborne Road in Lagos Nigeria uh, totaling about uh, 13 billion naira and uh, the aftermath of that is the NI claimed responsibility for that money, claimed ownership. Following that, the presidency has decided to suspend the DG of NI following that uh, revelation and uh, investigation launched. On the program today, we are joined by a former minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a barrister and an advocate of good governance and anti-corruption, Barrister Kenneth Baggy, joining us live in the studio today in London. Barrister, thank you for joining us on the program today, sir. Thank you very much. Tim. So far, there has been different types of information and um, discoveries, announcement by the uh, anti graft agency in Nigeria. When you when you hear some of this information, what 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 are your thoughts? Uh, to they put it this way, if you recall the last time I was at the studio, yeah, I said to you that one of my greatest regret is the health situation of Mr. Mr. President. President. Mm. I had expected a faster resolution to a number of issues than what we are now seeing. Mm. Uh, the suspension of the DGNIA is long overdue, and in any case, long overdue. Long overdue. Just like the but case. But one would have thought n nothing. The DGNIA has done nothing wrong until this very recent revelation. Why did you say long overdue? You see, those of you from the public world, you have this misgiving, thinking that politicians are the problems of the country. Mm. But strongly, it's not true. I pride myself as a politician, and I'll remain one for the rest of my life. But having said so, nothing would a minister do, can do, without the aid of the civil servant without the head of agencies. Minister does not have access to the vote. He doesn't approve. He, he could approve, you know, a project. He could approve, you know, an idea. But the actual implementation are those of the civil servant. Mm. I don't want to dwell and waste my time with the issue of the DGNI. In fact, his comment is an irresponsible comment coming from a taxpayer earner of that size and place. So he will have to suffer, in my opinion, for his own responsibility. For instance, if he was trying to do anybody favor, which is the case we can deduce from what has happened, by claiming 
that that sum of money is for an undercover intelligence work in the country. He's got a boss. You will recall when this president took office, like every other president does, mm. heads of ministries, heads of parastatters, heads of you know institutions such as the SSS, the DGNIA. I was once the chairman of the Legal Aid Council of Nigeria, and I briefed the late Yaradua, the president, when he died. Oh, sorry, when he took over, sorry, as president. So it's a custom, and we have this whole one-tier system where all monies of government is supposed to have been wiped together and put into a vault. At what time in his briefing did he brief the president that he's got 17 billion in the house of somebody in Nigeria? Understandably, that house, that flat, was bought with the name of the daughter of Chief Tony Aneni. Two flats of those two flats. Are confirmed yet? Yes, confirmed. And one of those flats, where this money is from, at what point did the DGNIA brief the president in office that I've got X amount of money in a flat belonging to NIA? In what vote and from which account? Is it from the central bank? Is it from where did he get that money he has packed? and said is in a vote or for undercover job. It's an irresponsible statement. Now, it's about time people who want to serve in government have their hands investigated, sanitized before they say they want to serve because the world today is a global village. Whatever you do, your driver, your cook, your houseboy, everybody knows. So he, he, in fact, he made himself a joke to claim to be the head of an NIA and make such a childish statement. As a criminologist, I see it as an insult to the entire country, and we must stop this type of bullshit. He has no claim at all. He will have to answer questions, and I expect that the investigation will go very deep. Since, of course, Mr. President is aware, I can assure you it will be difficult for anybody to mess around with. I mean, you, you uh, won't say, as a former minister, you might probably, one will say, okay, you're probably not in power, but you're still within the corridor of power to some extent as a politician. You just said, contrary to what we have heard, that those two flats belong to the daughters of um, Chief Adini. No, I said the flats were bought, bought yeah. in that name. But the information we have actually heard uh, was that um, they belong to Amici, 7A7B. You see, let me tell you something. A lot of stories, I've just used the word, they have been bought in that name. Okay. In that name. In that name. Mm. Do not forget the entire situation of the ownership of that flat was under wrap and investigation at two as well with the previous EFCC government of Jonathan. The that owner, property? Yes, the owner of that property was the former governor of Baoji State, who, as you know, have a mirage of problems with regards to the investigation as to what has happened to the money. But you see, this attitude of I'm in power and I want to cover things is the same reason why we are in bloody darkness today. It's the same reason why we are not moving. It's the same reason why the country is retrogressing. They were investigating this man. And as you know, my former boss, Jonathan, anything goes. He doesn't want to hear. In fact, if it was possible, both him and the former attorney general would have abrogated EFCC straight away. That was the plan if, it has, if they have stayed in office longer. So the question is, it is not whether or not where did the man stock the money with which that towers was built? The allegation was that he said he borrowed money from the bank. Mm. How much did he give to the bank? Where did he get the money to give to the bank? This whole nonsense he shredded. He claimed to a bank repossessed the property and sold and gave him two flats. The all of those, don't forget, floor. don't forget the man too was a bank managing director. All of those were crooked arrangement. Mm. This whole issue of taking the Nigerian vote as a personal property when you have access to it is the reason why there is inevitably going to be a problem in the country. We must have to check. Once you say you are in government, 
what you have technically said is that you are open for check. You are open for anybody. You see, if, if you talk about the money in question that has been seen in that flat, it's, it's nothing, absolutely nothing, compared to the money you have that has not been discovered. You have 500 million times more mm. such money in homes. Look, the governors, ministers, DGNIA, DGSSS, look, these people have, where do Nigerians bother to find out where is the vote? We make a vote every year. And at the end of the year, that money is gone. Nothing to show for it. Yeah, it's somewhere. And one of the things that has been done that is fantastic in Nigeria, except that the DGSSS now must sit up and use it. The whoever is the chairman of EFCC must sit up and use it. Is the BVM. This whole access of you know bank so, verification. So you have number. lots of money in coffins, in soccer pits, in roofs of houses, in underground casted trillions of dollars, trillions of euros, trillions of pounds sterling. Forget all the other currencies. They are loaded. Because they cannot put it in the bank. They can't take it anywhere. So the money is there. They are looking at the money and most of them will die leaving the money. I mean, you know the case of the former CSO, uh, Gordon Obua, who, who just died. We sat down. We were all going to contest elections. Suddenly one lady just came and was buying jeeps for everybody. Where would I have money to buy a jeep if I was trading with small trading and business? I'm doing, I want to contest to, you know, give my service. Buy, and the lady was inside of the insurance uh, 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 trust fund. That small boy, Ubwa, was dating her. And then that was all the reputation and all the power she had. And she came and was re -re If she was coming, everybody was dancing. And you know, Nigeria, I mean, if, if you say these so-called poor people. As she was spreading money, her name was going and she was spreading money. And then that was the girlfriend of Obwa. Today, nobody knows what killed this young man. Innocent man, when I saw him, I mean, I related to him very closely. But the shock of the fact that this woman has carried all those loots, all those loots, and took off and married another person in, uh, in South Africa was sufficient, is sufficient to have created shock to kill the man. So what I'm saying is that you are yet to see stories. Now what we should do is to either come abroad, get some you know, intelligence and people, this brain whistle thing is very nice, get some sniff dog to go to homes, get to sniff dog to go to bedding uh, bearing grounds and get some sniff dog to go to construction sites and everything. We will, we will find money in billions. You right. remember I first told you in this studio that there was no point going to borrow money anywhere. Let the ESCC do their job. Let the SSS do their job. We have more than enough money to run the country. Because money is there. These people were just carrying this whole money and stocking them in warehouses, in, you know, irresponsibly. So I'm saying, let's be calm about it. Let's pray for the health of this man to improve. At least do the duties for which he has asked Nigeria for their vote, and let's see how we're going to go. But I'm saying that, my God, there's a lot of money dogged away. Look, a lot of countries are living, Ghana is surviving because of Nigerian money, stolen money. China, Lebanon, there are people whose business alone, either Britain, American, Lebanese, or what have you, just coming to carry money from Nigeria to go and keep outside. And in any case, it is not easy. If they don't know the job, let them come to professionals to teach them. It is not easy. It's not difficult, rather, to trace money anymore. Because every money that comes to government comes to government by way of a, of a document. Today, you cannot take the money anywhere without it being traced. So, it is a lot easier. The agencies must now use the apparatus that has been put in place to make sure that the country is better. Like I said to the former president of Basanjo, we succeeded, second part of Basanjo's government, because I was involved and I had a lot of discussions with him. The, what did they do? We got the EFCC then to make sure, no everybody, to make sure that monies that are given to states actually goes to what's, you know, 
improving the state as it were. To that extent, you now saw governors awarding road contracts, <laughs> awarding road contracts to homes and areas that, because they need to award the contract for them to, even if they want to steal, for them to be able to siphon fi fi the money. But most importantly, my grouse is that I do not want to agree that because we are politicians, I'm a politician. The greatest names that Nigeria ever had, people like Saldona, people like Okpara, people like uh, Zeke, people like Awolo, those are politicians. So we will not agree, those of us who have clean records, who have nothing, no skeleton in our box, who, who are blemishless to say so, for us to be all rubbished, to say, oh, politicians are all, I don't want to hear that. And I will fight it every day to say, look, there are politicians and there are persons who masquerade, masquerade themselves as politicians, but in truth and indeed, they are criminals. So these are the ones that are playing out right now. All right. I've been talking with the uh, former Minister of State for Education, an industrialist, an attorney, and a politician, Olorogun Kenneth Baggy Barrister joining us live in the studio. Let me just quickly apologize for the use of word. Uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes here yeah, we have passionate expression here. Yeah, we do apologize for that. However, um, is a no whole bad discussion. You'll be allowed to call into the studio and also join our discussion. Barista, let me ask you. I mean, you were in the Jonathan government. You mm. just referred to him as your boss. Yeah, he was my and that administration has been accused as one of the most corrupt administration Nigeria has ever had. And you are in that government. I was. Partly you in were government. in that government. Partly in that government. I'm putting it to you, sir. Oh, oh sorry. Make a defense. Um, as I've said, it is a shame. It is a shame. It is indeed a shame. What happened in that government, I will break it into folds. Mm. Do not forget that my former boss, once a boss is always a boss, my former boss, Jonathan, inherited a sudden governance at the demise of yeah, a know. man I, I claim a very great Nigerian. He would have done wonders because we had cost of meat. Then I was not a minister. In fact, he had wanted me to come as a minister when I met him as then the chairman of the Legal Aid Council with what I did with all the prisons in the country. But I haven't said so. So Jonathan government was a government of persons from different divides, you know. Um, I was prevailed upon to be a minister. I rejected it. I mean, records are there to prove it. I rejected it. And in fact, Jonathan government is not the first government that attempted to make me minister. Obasanjo did. And then I finally went and took that poor man's job of legal aid council going to prisons, to decongest prisons and doing some work. But what happened after the election that gave Jonathan a full term, the government that I ran was a one-year minister government of that interregnum that was the government where I was the minister for education. And um, at the end of the election, we all did what we could do individually and all of those. And Jonathan came back as a president. At that point, Jonathan decided who he wanted. And so you find the likes of people like um, Ajemogobia, for instance, you know, Oh, myself, um, a couple of us. If you go back and check those ministers that did not come back. You didn't come back? I didn't come back. You didn't make the second term? No. Jonathan had asked me to proceed as ambassador. I mean, after that election, he had said, proceed as ambassador. But of course, I would leave my empire to go and become an ambassador anywhere. I mean, to do what? Drink wine and drive a Mercedes Benz with three staff. Today I have over 400 staff. Well, man, I wouldn't do that. However, if you check those people who didn't come back, in my opinion, those were the best of cream of that administration. 
Those were the people who told Jonathan the things that he wouldn't like to hear. Those are the kind of people who believe that the country, you do not need to frisk the country for you to be a great person. So those crops of ministers that did not come back after that election of 2011 are great people. And I have my greatest respect and I'm in touch with all of them till tomorrow. What, was the, greatest, what was the greatest undoing of former President Jonathan? You, you see, first and foremost, Jonathan, <laughs> Jonathan is the cause of his own problem. Jonathan himself is the cause of his own problem. And I say to Nigerian, Nigerians that they have heard nothing, they have seen nothing. More really? Is yet, more is yet to come. I serve that administration as a criminologist, and I can tell you, it is with grace of God, and I thank God that I didn't come back. I'm very pleased. I saw it, and thank God I didn't come back. And I'm a happier person for it. You have heard nothing. Jonathan is the architect of his own issues. That I can tell you. If I were to sit one-to-one -one with Jonathan, or I'm to talk about that government, it would be unfortunate. But you know, as a former minister with oath of secrecy, I like to say did and leave the rest. But I say that Nigeria, like the death of Obua, you are going to hear more things about it. You are going to hear the figures, the wife has started talking. Jonathan issue is yet to be discussed. And Nigeria is yet to know the truth about what took place in that government. So saying that that government is the most corrupt government, there are politicians, there are ministers in that government who did the first tenure of the one year that was left before the election that didn't come back. Even though they served in that government, they cannot be buried as one of those criminals who had looted the treasury of the country and who had participated. I gave you a name just now, uh, somebody, a great man, a great man of integrity like Ajibogobia, of course, was in that government. He didn't come back. With all the good English, he was a foreign minister with all the you know, achievement he had. I, I created university. I created the university that I went to Tweke. When I created that university, Jonathan did not know. It was in council that he spoke to me that I should put one in a twerk. So what I'm saying in effect is that there are people who were successful business people in their practice as either lawyers or entrepreneur or industrialists, which we were, that went into government to contribute our quota. And as, as it was then, that government of Jonathan did not believe in that way of doing things. He did not believe in that. Two years into the administration of President Muhammad Buhari, he, the, the administration has been saddled with a lot of responsibilities. With the tweet today announcing the suspension of David Lawababashi, the one of the most powerful individuals in his administration, people have said that was long overdue. What was Mr. President waiting for before now? You see, please. Can I put your oh let me quickly take this call then you go back to that question. Tony, thank you for joining us on the program today. Good evening, Tony. Uh please, can I speak with uh, yeah. Are you hearing me now? I can hear you, Tony. Go ahead. Yes, um I'm listening and uh, where, Tony, by the way, where are you calling from? Thanks a lot. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from London here. Thank you. Go ahead and make your point. Yes, I'm listening. Uh, can I ask uh, um, just talk to me. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just talk to me. Go ahead. Talk to me. Yes. One of the things that, you know, from hearing from what he said, <laughs> why, what, hello? Tony, turn down the volume of your TV set, mute your TV set, and talk straight to your um, handset. Yes. Okay. Hello? Yes. Why, why, what stops them any time or those 
All right, thank you so much, Tony. I'm going to put that question straight to him. Thanks a lot, Tony. Thank you for your question. Uh, plus the question I asked you, two years into this administration, why now suspend Baba Shilawa despite the call for a suspension, investigation by the Senate? Plus the question asked by Tony, you can decide which one you want to take first. When you were in power, in government, politician, things were going on, why did you talk then? Um, Tony, many thanks um, with your question. I think... It will do you a world of good if you if you Google me. There is no time in the last 30 years of my life I have remained silent as to what is going on negatively in any government. No time. So if you bother to Google me, either right away or before you see how I fought from the military days, making sure I say what my mind is because unless you are a criminal, what is going on in the country is very offensive. But coming back to the suspension. If you recall the last time I was in this um, environment, I had lamented a very painful situation of the health of the president. You should pray never to be sick. Some of you who had gone through, you know, operations or gone into health situations or challenges, you know, it, it, the, the, the man wants to move. The man wants to kick. Nigeria is a funny country where you'll be surprised how many people are praying spiritually to make sure that the man does not even come to the office. Mm. You'll be surprised how many people are praying for him not to wake up the next morning because of their criminal act. Just as you find some other people who want him there for what he will do for the country. Now, it's like for... Or for what they will benefit. No, it's, too tr it's, it's, it's a, a two-pronged thing. Some people for what they will benefit, some people why they want to look up to him to see a great president to run a country. Some, it's like the police science. I'm a criminologist, for instance. When we did that science, the study was that if you see the siren, you, in London it's very prevalent, you see all these siren vehicles going around in the street, not necessarily pursuing anybody. That is the science of omnipresence. It works two ways. Here you see the siren. Those who are criminal minded, they are scared to act because they hear that noise. So in their subconscious, they say, oh, the policeman is around. So they don't want to act, just as it does for the persons that are, just as it does for the person that are uh, uh, law-abiding citizens. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, we go and relax. The police, the police is, are around. The police are around. So that is the science of omnipresence, presence. And of course, it's a theory mm -hmm. that was propounded. Now, you do not pray to have a man that is done health-wise. Buhari would have, ha would have been better off being a president four years before now mm. than he is today. But I can tell you, what will a 70 years old man, a 70 years old plus man, want to do with a loot like Buhari? He will damage his name forever. So the question is that Buhari has no choice. Buari has no choice other than to do it right. So, plus the fact that he has what we call self-discipline. It has character. One of the major problems we had is that people in governance, most of them, are characterless. And as such, anything goes. You can't say that of Buari. And I, I, I kind of likened it to the vice president as well. If you take the vice president, for whom I have known in the last 20 something years. He has character. There are people who have no character. Oshibajo has character. So you do not expect him to do certain things. You see, Omol, we call it Omoluabi. There are certain things he cannot do. So to that extent, that they have acted after so long, let us first and foremost applaud them. Let us first and foremost appreciate the fact that they have started. And let, in my opinion, the media, the social media, they're doing a lot now. Let them do more to put pressure. We want to know the outcome. For instance... Let me put you on hold before you go on the for instance. I've got Kingsley on the line. Kingsley, thank you for joining us on the program today. Good evening, Kingsley. Hello, Kingsley. Good evening, Kingsley. Do we have Kingsley there? Oh, Kingsley is gone. Kingsley, I'm sorry about that. You may want to call back. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Call back, Kingsley. Okay, go on. For instance? For instance, 
Yesterday, it was a situation of no action. Today, there's action. So let the media, I still hold the media responsible for the backwardness of the situation we have in the country. We had the EFCC in deception of this government, if you recall, going to a farm in Nasarawa to dig out some money from a former government, a former governor, a former, known to everybody. Where is the money? Where is that money? We had the EFCC, for instance, going to, a, to Kaduna, to the house of the former GMD of um, NNPC, NNPC, to dig out. Where is the money? What has happened? We must not... We had money found at Kaduna Airport. Found at what Kaduna. Has happened? What has happened? So what we are saying is that the media... But do you blame the media? If the media calls in to the office of the spokesperson for EFC and say, look, I've got no information, I'll call you back. And then they give you no story. Is it not the responsibility of the agency involved to call a press conference or to brief the media if they want us to know what is happening? What if they deny you information? What no, do you do? No, 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 no. Look information as you know is two ways it's either you get it directly from the man who ought to give it to you mm -hmm. and if he fails get it by all means and that situation avails itself what i'm saying to you is that the media is not doing enough every nation particularly one that is endemically corrupt i mean what do you think the president the president alone cannot do it I can tell you, the president has to sleep. If he, if he has to cash every thief and every criminal in the country, he will not sleep. He will die in 10 days. So what I'm saying in effect is that let us individually do what we need to do. As I have said, the press, the social media and everybody should pursue this whole situation to bring Nigeria out of this yoke of irresponsibility. Let me put you on hold. I've got Timmy on the line. Timmy, thank you for joining us on the program today. Where are you calling from, Timmy? Good evening, Timmy. Hello, Timmy. You're live. Timmy, you're live. Hello, Timmy. I think we should put Timmy on hold until he's ready. Are you there, Timmy? Okay. All right. When you're ready, you can call us back to me. Okay, go on. So the social media should do more than they're doing. The press should do more than they're doing now. Because the stigma that is associated with Nigeria it's not those in government that suffers it. It's individuals like you who is laboring hard, wasting all your time and day in the studio looking for how to better the situation that will suffer. You go, you carry a Nigerian passport. So the question is that it is not a fight for Buhari and Oshibaja. No. It is a fight for the country. And when monies like that are discovered, and so much more will be discovered, I can assure you, it is the duty of the media to follow it a logical conclusion. There's a freedom of information bill. So nobody has been hounded. The question is that we need to follow it. As we speak, governors are stashing away monies. As we speak, ministers are stashing away monies. As we speak, heads of parastatas and agencies, and agencies are stashing away monies. Mm -hmm. They are using their wife, they are using their children, they are using their daughters. We cannot all answer a name or carry a sh a weight of crime which we did not participate in. That's All what right. I'm saying. Let me put you on. I've got Joshua on the line. Joshua, thank you for joining us on the program. Good evening, Joshua. Where are you calling from today? Hello, Joshua. Hello, good evening. Thanks Mr. a lot. Thanks Hello, for jo evening. Thank you for joining us. Where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm, call I'm calling from Bedford. My name is Joshua Way. Calling, calling from, from Bedford, Mr. Sunday. Bedford? From Bedford, Bedford. Bedford, oh, Bedford. Yeah. okay, okay. All right, Bedford, sure. Go ahead, Joshua. Yeah, um, we're so happy to see Barrister Kenneth on the live program. We're so happy. This is the first time in the history of, of politicians that I'll be seeing uh, someone that I've sat under good Lord Jonathan saying good things about the present government. I'm so happy to see this. We're enjoying it. I've Googled Barrister Kenneth on the, on the Internet. I could see a lot of things he has done in the past, and we're so happy to see him anyway. So I just need to say that. So thank All right, you Joshua. Yeah, Joshua. Thank you. TV. Thank you, Joshua. All right, thank Joshua. You. Thanks. Th thanks for the commendation. Thanks a lot. Keep watching the program. All right, joining me now is Barata Kennedy Bagi uh, Olorogun. He was a minister 
on the former administration of President Kolo Jonathan for about a year, Minister of State for uh, of Minister education. of State for education. For edu education and under his ministry, uh, universities, federal universities were created in almost every state of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and he is a very successful entrepreneur, a barrister an advocate and of course we've just heard him say he was at the point the chairman of um the legal aid council, the legal of aid council in mm -hmm. nigeria still a politician per se uh join us live on the show today talking about the issue of the fcc and anti the anti-corruption where he said nigerians have not seen or heard anything more will still be discovered let me take you on earlier on Previously, while you were on this program some time ago in this studio, you spoke about how the age and the health of President Muhammad Buhari could be some hindrance at some point. Now we see to some extent how much this has actually crippled, crippled him a little bit and affecting him in taking certain decisions so much that the wife has actually come out to say, look, the government is not being run by our husband. At the point, the president did say, well, she wouldn't know which party the wife belonged to, but sh he did know that the wife belonged to his, his, <laughs> his kitchen and the inner room. But seriously now, do you think a man of 72 plus, burdened with health challenges, struggling every day with his health will have enough time, capacity, intelligence to run a country as complex as Nigeria. Put it this way, Tunde, health belongs to God. I'm 56 today. Thank God for a wonderful situation with all the challenges of life. We've seen presidents all over the world. How old is um, Trump? If you remember, hmm. how old is the President Mentua? Uh, how old is um, it? All depends on what God has bestowed you with. Um, for as long as He believes that He's strong enough to discharge His responsibilities, which I think there's a nice cooperation between Him and the Vice President, if you ask me. Hmm. And I think there's a synergy. Because, like I said, I will go to the top of the hill if the vice president would have been would, would be caught in a negative sense of doing things wrongly. Because that is not what uh, Bola Jibola Bola Jibola will commit suicide to say, "Oh, this is somebody I brought up, and this is what has happened." So we are watching keenly too. But putting in it, health belongs to God. My prayer is that Buari did not get to that office by mistake. God has brought him for a purpose and he will discharge that purpose in his lifetime for God to take a different decision. All right, right let me put on hold. I've got Yinka. Good evening, Yinka. Where are you calling from today? Hello, I'm calling from North Re. My name is Frank. Frank. Okay, Frank. Thank, thank you so much, Frank, for calling in. Uh, yeah, where do you say you are calling I me? Where is that? I want to back up the statement made by a barrister. Okay. Um, Buhari come with a good intention of... Can I Buhari ask you to meet um, good intention Frank, for Nigeria Frank. and for Nigerians. And but he cannot do it alone. Frank, you he, need to mute your TV. Frank, you need to mute your TV. You need to pause, mute, or slow down, turn down the volume of your TV. Just okay, talk, straight, okay. talk straight to your to your answer. Okay. Go on. Okay, yeah. He cannot do it alone. Um, he, we all have to contribute in fighting corruption. We cannot leave it to him alone and not see banjo. They have done well, they have been performing well. But it's left to Nigeria to fight the corruption themselves. All the people in the governors, the senators, all of them, they are rogue, they are thieves. 
We are talking about 13 billion naira found in the hotel, in the building. That shows how corrupt Nigerians are. So we can't leave it to Buhari and Osiba and John alone. We all have to fight the corruption together. Fra Frank, would, would, would you say all, all Nigerian politicians are corrupt? Um, um, not really, but 95 to 97% are corrupt. Hmm. All the people in the Senate House are, are, are thieves. That is why they, are not, they can't move Nigerian forward. All right, thank you, thank you, Frank. Frank, thank, thank, Frank, thanks a lot. Thanks for your contribution. I mean, Frank will say that ninety-five percent of Nigerian politicians are corrupt. See, all of them in the National Assembly are corrupt. But can I put it to you? Why do you think Nigerian politicians are corrupt? Why do they stash away money? You see, put it this way. I said to you a while ago that this president has character, balanced ego. Can we just generic, do a generic analysis yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm politicians nah, I'm going, I'm going there. are greedy with money and I'm, corrupt? I'm going, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going there, Tunde. I, I started with the president. Mm. I went to the vice president and I likened the both of them to say the vice president has character. He has integrity. Plus the fact that he's a lawyer. So he has, he, he, in fact, he has a big burden on himself not to fall. You get what you want. At contested governorship election in 1999. Because I'm not a crook. I don't intend to go there to amass wealth. I was a minister. When I was a minister, I said everything I needed to say. I said it to Jonathan. I told Jonathan, if you go back to history, I said after I left that cabinet, when election was going to come eight months before the election, I made a world press conference that Jonathan cannot win election again in Nigeria except the miracle of God. The fact here is that who appoints a senator? You get one crook that is a governor, for instance, he chooses or decides who becomes his senator, who becomes a House of Rep member, who is a local government chairman, who is uh, a commissioner. So, members of the House of Assembly. All of those. Not necessarily because they merited, not because they have done what it takes. They are, everybody is looking for a stooge. You see the president. Picking a man like Oshibajo, of course, he wouldn't have expected Oshibajo to be a stooge to him. It's not possible, I can tell you that. It's not possible. So, how do you sanitize the system? I'm going to talk to Oshibajo and invite the president when I go back, by whatever means. One of the greatest things they must do immediately to stem this problem is to credit the accounts of local government that has been misappropriated. Local government no longer. We have three tiers of government as it were by constitution. Today, the local government has been completely decimated. Completely. So, but for the health of the president, I expect that himself and Oshibajo, one of the first things they must do is to pay local government money directly to their accounts. So we have people to look up to. People who cannot look at the state, they are local. Let them go back and fight with their local government chairman as to what has happened to the money you have brought. To the money that has been you know assigned to us you see we must run government the only reason is not that i mean there are criminal minded people all over the world can, in britain can I, can I, can I, i'm sorry i need to put you on hold because you've got a lot of calls coming in this afternoon uh we've got adams on the line adams thank you for waiting good evening adams good evening adams are you there Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry for uh, for keeping you waiting. I mean, once this calls comes in, I just need no, to... No, fine. Because you've got calls coming in. Between, uh, be, be, between you and I, when we took over government, mm -hmm. like I said, the day I created those 12 universities, whatever game they played, nine of those universities were going to the north. The people out that... Out of 12. Out of nine 12. To nine north. to... Yes? Uh, nine to... Kitty... Nine was going to the north. 
three were coming to the south because at that time those were the only states in the federation that had no university and my decision was if nigeria has become a cash and country i will share the money every day some states who that did not have were states that did not have power and connections so ekiti ebui Bayesa, sorry for Bayesa and Benue, where the no Benue is for the north. So Ekiti, Bayesa and Benue were the universities in the south, part of Nigeria that didn't have federal federal university. Federal university. What I appropriated was to create twelve university which was left, fourteen polytechnic which was not done, and sixteen colleges of education as we speak. We've done the first tranche of twelve university. The other two tranches of polytechnic and colleges of education had not been done. I'm going to talk to the minister when I go back, one of my plans. What I'm saying is that people should run and go. Once you see yourself in government, you are not supposed to go there to line up your pockets. That's why they cannot talk. That's why it's all of them. They all have skeleton in their boxes. We must investigate. I hear without any facts. Why? Because this whole thing happened while I was still in the UK. I'll get to know about it. That the issue of Amechi, for instance, not to support Amechi, was that it was all coined to say it's Amechi's money. For instance, if it's Amechi money, bring Amechi to the square. I'm talking about that money that was discovered. But I hear too that the DG NIA was told to return favor by accepting the money as being his money. But where he criminally incriminated himself was the fact that who did he brief? Did he brief the president? Did he brief the DGSSS? Who did he tell that such an amount of money capable of importing ammunition to cause disaffection in the country is stored in a house, not in the bank processes? So, you see, what I'm saying in effect is that we need to check this whole system back. And the only responsibility Buhari and Oshibajo will be quite to Nigeria is to try to make sure because the problem are a mirage. They are so plenty. But make sure they start somewhere. Uh -uh. Give local government back their money instead of giving it to the governors. Two, make sure that the electioneering process is right. Three, make sure that not one godfather sitting down and picking people to House of Assembly, to the Senate, and as it is now, let people of integrity, people of character, emerge by the process. Still on why there's huge corruption among politicians in Nigeria, you mentioned the process of ele the ele election process in the country. It is no story that Nigeria's democracy, election, or election processes are one of the most expensive in the world. Could that be one of the reasons why politicians stash huge amount of money? Because from the process, from the moment you want to go through primaries, you pay money. You 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 say both Professor Shibanjo and Shibanjo and MB President Bell are people of character. But even the process of emerging as the presidential candidate of the party, there are stories of foreign currencies exchanging hands. Yes. Talk less of at the party primary level, at election level, and this press down. So if politicians know that is an expensive process, wouldn't that be another reason why they start cash away? No. Between you and I, that's what I've said. They have now emerged through this ugly and embarrassing situation, mm. as it were. They have a duty not to leave it as dirty. How would they do that? No, it's easy. First and foremost, pass a law and make the thing unattractive to, you know, see. But the look at the kind Nigeria of money look that at limits how much can be spent on election. No, no, in this country today, in this country, I mean, the, the, the government in power today, conservative, have been fined in this country for going beyond their budget. Last year, Labour Party was fined for going beyond its budget at election level. There are laws in Nigeria restricting how much every party can be spent. That's why I said to you earlier on, I said the issue of the media is a problem in Nigeria. We need to work well. For instance, those laws are there. And make it unattractive. If somebody knows that 
a poor man, a crazy man. We've seen people who are mechanics, people who are beer boys, people who are cab drivers in London emerging to become leaders in the country. All because they bring little money, capitalizing on the poverty of the people and making sure that they play with their greed and run up to office. Another serious situation we have, apart from dealing, make it unattractive. If I've made my wealth, I've made my money by hard work, I've been able to go to my farm to earn money, I go to sell product, I go to do manufacturing, and I want to go and contribute to governance. Okay? Those specs, for instance, I was a minister. I did not use, I've never in my life, all the appointments I've been asked to come and participate in, I've never taken salary. The records are there. I've never driven government car before. Because whilst I was going to school, the impression was that a white collar job is for a slave. Um, let me put it so on hold. Do we still have understand. Adams on the line? Do we still have Adams? Adam is gone. Okay. So between you and I, it is a process. If you make governance as a contribution as opposed to going to amass wealth, it will make more meaning. For instance, you have a man living in the same street with you. We are talking about whistleblowing. It's going to go to an alarming state. You have a man living in the same street with you who hardly could have food for his wife and two children. Right? And the man suddenly says he's a politician after doing whatever he did to become a politician. And the man has 18 jeeps. The FCC have a job. What ev every local government in Nigeria have one SSS man. I've advocated earlier on that the ESSC should produce a counter office as well in all the local government. So they know if you are living beyond your means, you are building a, the local government chairman, for instance, they are all building houses. Because what happened? It's a sharing arrangement. The governor takes all the money and says, hey, don't worry, take small. No, he cannot talk because the governor will not return him. So to that extent, He's using the little he has, building houses for himself. Building. So where did you come from with no house, no vehicle, four years ago? Today you have six houses. The ESC should come after that man. So what I'm saying is that it does not foreclose genuine people who have labored, who have access. Look, every check I have had since I was an adult, or I became an adult, I have a photocopy of it. I don't mess around. So, unless you have a record of your, how you became a wealthy man, you should be come after, they should come after you. You should produce results. You should produce evidence of how, how do you suddenly say you borrowed money to build a tower? How? Where did you borrow it from? I'm sorry, I, I, I need to go now. Unfortunately, we've got calls coming in at different angles, but we need to go now. Uh, Barrister Kenneth Greggy seems to have attracted quite a lot of call and discussion on the program today. It's been a pleasure. We do hope the next time you're in town, you will certainly be our guest since you're a hot guest attracting quite a lot of calls today. <laughs> I will try, I will try. I will it's try. been a pleasure this, having this chat with Barrister Kenneth Greggy, former minister uh, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria under the former administration of President Claude Jonathan an entrepreneur and of course uh, an attorney and of course still a politician doing very well for himself. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye. For any professional live streaming production of any event in the UK, Ben TV Livestream are here to serve and provide you with the global coverage you need anywhere at real time. We are offering a deal to accommodate the local events. Just send us an email for more information at livestream at bentelevision.com or call us on 020-8808. 8800 Ben TV Sky 182 Bridging the Gap